All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other side of the country in New Jersey by Ahuva Gruen. How are you doing, Ahuva? Great. Thank you, John, for having me on the show. Oh, of course. And Hoover is a seasonal, seasoned, seasonal, seasoned fractional CFO uh, dedicated to transforming business and unlocking their full potential with over 20 years experience, specializes in providing clarity and insight to entrepreneurs struggling with their finances. As a former CFO of a large company, she has a proven track record in significantly increasing revenue, securing financing and expanding services. Now the founder of her own business, she leverages CPA and her CPA and CFO background to guide companies towards growth and profitability uh, and often joins clients in C-suite as an advisor, as a visionary advisor. So what we're going to talk today is about maximizing profitability and who doesn't want to do that. Um, so Ahuva, when, when you go work with companies, what is what are some of the first things that you can identify, like almost straight away, that's very common to a lot of companies that may be impacting their profitability? Well, that's a great question. The first thing is, is profit margins. Are they priced right? Are they priced right? Are their employees in the right position? Is there accountability in with the employees? Are they doing efficient work, efficient work, or are they not doing efficient work? Are they priced right? Let's say a, a service-based industry. Do they know what is going into giving that product? How much it really costs, or they're choosing a price out of the hat? <laughs> I go all the time into companies like recently, and I went in and I looked at the books and I interviewed the CEO and the staff members. And I said, I think your pricing is off. And I think it's the employ your employees, how they're doing the services. And he said, really? He thinks he's priced right. And he tells me how he priced. And when we, when I dug into the business and, and into the financials, I saw there was, two big issues his pricing was wrong he was not including everything that goes into the job into the pricing and the staff his employees were they doing were they doing their work correctly were they overdoing it doing too much work for the scope of the work or were they weren't Mm -hmm. accountability tracking hours to know what is really in what is really cost the direct right cost if you're selling a product an amazon product for example do you does the company really know what the true cost right. what the cost of the products what the cost of the landing products what amazon fees what's the advertising a manufacturer do they really know do they really have to have a good sense of that each product what it actual cost is mm -hmm. that number one is is you have to have price right yeah. And, and yeah and let me let me just ask you on that because it seems to me that oftentimes people price things uh as you said it, out of thin air or they just look around what is everybody else pricing and then they go you know, similar people and say, okay, do I want to be this expensive? Do I want to be, do you want to be somewhere in the middle? But the, it is based, it's not based on often in the internal things. It's just based on like, well, let's kind of try and be in the middle. And then the other thing you said there that I think is worth repeating is, is not counting uh, and not like uh, tracking all of the costs, right? We're really good at, at ignoring all these. You said like the service people, maybe they're doing more than they should, but we don't even track that, but it's costing us. Yeah, so uh, two great points. I see that all the time. First of all, yeah, they want to be priced in the middle, but if you're pricing, if you're not making money, it doesn't help you to get sales. It doesn't help a business to get sales and sales and sales if they're not making money. Rather, raise your price to what you have to get to gross profit and net profit. Gross profit is sales minus direct cost, the percentage of your profit. Net net profit margin is 
is gross profit margin plus all the op overhead operating costs. If you don't have good profit margins, then it doesn't help you to have good sales. If you're running, then you're just spinning your wheels and, and you're on survival. And then if something goes wrong, the business, God forbid, will go under. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yes, you have to know what the industry standard if a fly you need to have sales but it has to be balanced with your cost with your profit margin and that hits another item is if something you can't raise because it'll be above industry standards and you won't get clients then focus on the items that you will get clients that you will get business that you do have higher profit margin that's one of the things i go in a company and look, we were making money, we were losing money. Some items, they're cutting even. I went into manufacturing and they were selling things and they were losing money. They had no idea what they were really. And it's in construction, it's in Amazon, it's professional service, it's in products, it's all over, I see this. Mm -hmm. And then um, what about, uh, and, and the other thing too is, uh, I think oftentimes people get a little, uh, a bit lazy about expenses right about controlling expenses about those because because especially if you have a a company everybody's so focused on sales and generating sales that they're not paying attention to all the money that's maybe hemorrhaging out of the company in unnecessary unnecessary expenses so when you work with people how do you get them to start to be very deep and looking at like the cost of everything because i mean it's amazing how the we always used to say i was just to say that we'd talk about, um, you know, what's the biggest destroyer of homes in the US every year and people would go fire and you go, nope. And then you go, you know, wave, flood or whatever, hurricane, nope, it's termites, right? And, and termites don't destroy your house overnight, they chip away at it. And that's like all those hidden expenses chipping away at your business. Great, great point. And one of my passions is to really get, when I go into business, I work on what where they can make more money, but where they can stop leaking money. When I go in there and I if the if the books are not clean, I clean up the books and I work with the staff and then I make a budget, a forecast, and see where like a client of mine said, I open his eyes. He wants you to budget how much he could spend on research, development, and marketing when really he had no idea what things were costing and he was losing money i i show i have a meeting with the staff with the ceo and with the the high um high level staff what's what's costing us money what are we spending in each area how many services are you paying for that don't use how many subscriptions are you paying how many equipment that is supposed to be saving money on the job that's really taking more labor? I just had that by a client and it was costing more and we were losing money on the project using equipment that was supposed to be to save money. Mm. On your rent, on your overhead, on the advertising, all over. It's, I, are you paying interest on, on credit card loans, which is like water down the drain? Mm -hmm. And it's so important to know, it's important to know how much your expenses are because it's important to know how much your net profit margin is and to be conservative if you have a slow month. Yeah, and yeah. to also to build cash reserve rather than just spend and spend. You have to track the expenses, you have to also track, it's important back to the income to track how much really, how much your jobs, direct courses, your labor, your material, your, your equipment. It, another point is on the expenses, on gas expense, on vehicles, everything. Mm. It's so important. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, because one of the things you just alluded to there, like the importance of of and building up cash reserves, because I think that's where a lot of people get into into trouble is, um, and, you know, especially small businesses and entrepreneur and people who start off is that uh, it's great to it's great to be generating revenue. Right. That's that's fantastic. But maybe they're not paying you on time. Maybe, you know, especially if you it's, oftentimes it's the worst. Like if your services to big 
businesses you think oh yeah great and it's great to get them but then sometimes they'll pay you really slowly and and therefore you can run into liquidity issues so how important it is is it for people to be that little bit more conservative and give themselves more runway oh it's so important because number one is that all these little expenses add up number mm -hmm. two is when you have a business and you get a good big client if they don't pay you on time and you can't pay your bills it could make you go under mm -hmm. because when you you have to have good processes to know to have a how much money they have to give deposit how much money they have to give in the middle of the job how much money they have to get at that how much money to let them have a retainer so you, that's number one for cash flow number two even the part that you'll get paid at the end you have to have enough reserve and enough cash flow to carry it if a painter takes a job and he cannot afford to, the labor or the material he has to have a plan he has to have processes that one of the things that i go into a company and i work with them is are there processes are there payment processes to the clients good are there payment processes with their vendor good do they have a cash flow? Are they just spending without anything? It's like termites. I love the analogy. All the little expenses add up. People mm -hmm. don't realize a little meal here, meal there, a subscription, $20 here, $50 here, $100 here. It all adds up. Mm -hmm. and so I guess I guess part of it, I and mean, I'm sure this is also what you do, is that putting in some controls and approval processes, except because again, I mean, especially like if you're a small entrepreneur, you know, sometimes you're moving quickly. It's it's you know, overlook putting in those uh, checks and balances and those approval processes. Oh my, Ke checks and balances is important for all size companies. In the small ones, there could be more people that is doing more than one job, more, one person doing more than one job, but you have to have checks and balances. You have to have a system of who approving what. You can't just be in the fly. And every, let's say, credit card, which is a big, like people don't realize they're even spending, who approved it? What was it for? how much money is it making directly or ind indirectly and it has to be and a lot of times i come in there and i'm like the grounding i become the grounding force of accountability of tracking of opening up the ceo's eye opening up this about what course what's going on what what system do we need to put to be put in place when someone writing a check Who's approving it? Mm -hmm. Who's making sure it's the correct wiring information? I caught, I looked over a bookkeeper's work and I caught the uh, employee cash the check twice or fraudulent charges. It has to be, it has to have accountability. It has to have details. We're not making decisions on just thin air, on Chinese. If you don't speak Chinese on a Chinese paper, Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, uh, and then, so, I mean, you mentioned again before, like processes, and I think that's one of the toughest things is because sometimes people think processes are like, well, I'll do them when we get bigger, or I, or, well, we like to be very flexible. So processes are going to stop us doing that. I think sometimes people overlook the fact that process is your friend. Yes, bad processes are bad processes. Over-engineered processes are not good but processes in themselves are essential. Yes, really true. We need we need processes with everything. Process how to give employees um, over a job, the scope of a job. Processes how something is manufactured. Processes how we pay our vendors, when we pay our vendors. Processes when you're getting in an item, who makes sure that we got the, the material or the products. Processes in every area of our lives a tracking of uh, and of our businesses processes is everything now we it has to be balanced you don't want to micromanage yeah. and like stand over people's shoulders your staff members won't be happy mm -hmm. but if you don't have accountability and processes i'll give you an example yeah i had a i came into a client and i 
And I said, I believe that, that it's taking your employees too long to do the job. And I couldn't, they had a system, they had a software, they're paying money. Talk about expenses. They had a software paying money, but if they're not using it, what does it help? So I made it, we made a staff meeting that everyone has to use the software to track the hours on the job. And then we saw about people taking too long or, or doing too much, overdoing, mm -hmm. do more than the scope of a, a job. And then we had to put a process in about asking the client what they want the products for, what they want the service for, giving it over to the employees who are going to actually do the field work to know, um, to know how much to do to be profitable. Mm -hmm. It has to be communication, it has to be team effort, but there has to be a system for checks and balances and right. financial and the operation and everything. I take a holistic approach when, to a job as a fractional CFO when I come in. I don't just look at the books, the financial books. I look at the four Ps, products, processes, people, and profit. Mm -hmm. What's working, what's not working, what's working with the with your staff members, what work, what processes are working, what processes need to be implemented and talk is cheap. You have to actually mm -hmm. make sure that it's, it's being followed. Profit margin products is up. Are, are our clients happy with the service or with the product? Mm -hmm. Like really to really because everything hits the, the dollar bill at yeah. everything hits the bank account. Yeah. And then and then I guess like the the continual feedback, because if you take your example of, you know, maybe they're doing too much in the delivery of whatever service it is. So maybe maybe it turns out that you do need to do more for that service. So therefore, to your original point, maybe that service isn't priced correctly in the first place. Uh, and so things like that's like uh, constantly monitoring. Are you was that just a one off or is that typically what's happening now in order to deliver this service, you have to do this extra work. Well, if you got to do this extra work, then you're not priced properly. Right. So when I go into a, when we discuss a profit margin and we track, we have the employees track their hours. And if it's a product, the direct cost, and based on what the pro, what the client needs or the product needs is we, once we know the direct cost, I give a pricing tool and then we know if we're priced correctly. If the price is too low, we raise the price. Then afterwards we go, I, we track it and we see, do we make money? Do we make the right profit margin or not? If we did great, what went right? So we could keep doing it. If we didn't, what went wrong? Is it something in our control? Is it the client or is the, whether depending on what business or something that the employee did wrong, then they, we have to call in the employee and discuss it. That is there a reason and really to learn from the future. Yeah. It's not just to cry over the past, but it's to learn for the future. Yeah. And I guess the other part too is then that constant um, looking at um, ensuring everybody knows their role properly, right? So that there is not that, uh, and, and that there's not like du duplicate work or, or more people doing things. So the constantly looking, I guess, also at the efficiency. Oh, yes. Efficiency. That's an, I w worked with that with one of my clients recently is he had a nice professional staff, but he wasn't giving over who should do what. You have to look at everyone's weakness, each person's weakness and strength and give them and delegate the work right. There's a wonderful book I love. It's called Who Not How. Mm. I think it's by Dan Sullivan. It talks about not doing everything yourself, but delegating. Part of delegating is to know who to give what work. If someone has not enough work, don't go hire more workers. They shouldn't mm. go hire more workers. Yeah. Go give him more work. If you if you're paying someone for is um the CEO's assistant, make sure they have a right work. And then because also if you have to delegate correctly, you won't have things falling through the cracks. If you're mm. not servicing your clients properly, they're not going to be happy. They're not going to come back. Yeah. 
Yeah. In service-based in industry, it's also, it's also, yeah, are you delivering on time? Are they too happy? It's all, it's a matter of, and a product, are you delivering the product on time? Is one person overworked and one right. person sitting twiddling their thumbs? Yeah, no, no, ab absolutely. I think those are so in incredibly, incredibly important. And it really does take that detail. Well, listen, Ahuva, this has been fantastic. So much great information. Thank you so much. All of Ahuva's information will be, be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. So I'm a fractional CFO, which means a part-time CFO. I come into companies that don't need a full-time CFO, but they need financial help on the strategic control and strategic end, how to plan, stop leaking money, how to grow, how to really flourish and not just spin their wheels. And, and my passion is to help companies grow and succeed. And I also have a freebie for the, for the, your audience. If they, if they go on LinkedIn and DM me on Ahuva Gruen and DM me top 10 or on my website, agfinancialcpa.com under the tab top 10 they could i have a freebie of the top 10 mistakes businesses make and more importantly and how to avoid them yeah fantastic well listen that's great i would encourage everybody to go and check out that that free res uh, that free resource so listen thank you again Hoover. thank you for watching and listening and i'll see you all again very soon thank you